The third Beijing Waterways walk starts where the last finished, at the entrance to Yu Yuantan Park under the old CCTV tower in the far west of the city. It's the longest of the five walks at 26 kilometers and took me a full day to complete. Divided into two sections, the first follows the Yongding River to where it meets the city moats of the Qing Dynasty and follows them round in a horseshoe-like shape to the main Beijing railway station where you meet the Tonghui Canal. The second section follows the water east towards the Grand Canal. It was not a good start for me. I checked my pollution app at 7am and bulked at the high reading, but encouraged by the weather forecast of clear skies and a strong wind, I prepared a pack for the day and set off to the Gongju Fen subway station. By 9am I was walking amidst the morning dancers in Yu Yuantan Park, following the lakeside that runs parallel to the Yongding River. Further east, the park narrows to a walkway following the river and providing a gentle start to the long day. As I came out of the park near the Mushidi Bridge, I found myself in a small square with local elderly musicians madly practicing a range of traditional instruments. It's a fitting Chinese welcome to the South City Moat, which you join shortly after the square and begin to head south along the 16th century waterway. It starts with a walk under the mass intersection at Tiangningshu Bridge, then along straight paths with steep embankments on either side of the water. The spring was in full swing as I walked, taking in all the activity both in and around the water. After a while, the moat takes a sharp turn east and then brings you alongside the Taoranting Park and the Temple of Heaven before reaching the Long Tan Lake, where the moat once again takes a sharp turn, this time north heading towards the Beijing Railway Station. So this is one of the longest walks that I'm going to do on this series. Uh, about 24 kilometers and I'm a little over halfway and it's getting into the early afternoon and today is a great example of how the Beijing weather and pollution can really change when I I looked at my pollution meter very early this morning it was telling me on my phone it was about 250 and I was thinking I shouldn't go out but I trusted in my instincts I could see that there was a wind coming up and that the forecast was a clear blue sky and within a couple of hours the pollution was all washed away and we're stuck with a, a beautiful day and I've been walking for several hours now in what can only be described um, as about as, as good as it gets in Beijing. At the point the moat joins the Tonghui Canal I was forced off the water and then back again at times having to scramble and climb up over walls to keep my course. It's a unique glimpse at Beijing from every side. I walk through homeless communities camped under the bridges, through migrant worker low-cost housing squeezed onto the land between the water and the busy roads, and into beautifully laid out parks with shiny new apartment blocks and views across the skyscrapers of the city's financial district. Look closely and you'll also find remnants of the ancient sluice gates built by Kublai Khan's architect, Gao Shou Jing, a thousand years ago when he built the waterway to bring in supplies from the Grand Canal. As the sun set, I reached Sehui, where the canal opens up into a lake popular with the rich and privileged in dynasties gone by. Eating a final snack found in the bottom of my bag, I sat and reflected on a long but thoroughly rewarding day. This is DJ Clark on the Beijing Waterways for China Daily.